Hello and welcome to a brand new section using raster data. In this section, we'll load a raster layer, get its size, width, and height. We will count and swap raster bands. We project a raster. We will create elevation hillside, vector contours from elevation data, common extent, and pyramids for rasters. We will query for raster value. Sample a raster dataset. We sample raster resolution. Classify and clip a raster to a shape file. We will look at conversions. TIFF to JPEG. Raster to vector. Pixel location to map coordinate and vice versa. We will add elevation data to align vertice. Count the unique values in a raster. Mosaic rasters. Create an image overlay on raster and georeference a raster. Now, let's start with the first video of this section, loading a raster layer. In this video, we'll go through how to load a raster layer and then add it step by step to the map. The QGS Raster Layer API provides a convenient high level interface to raster data. To use this interface, we must load a layer into QGIS. The API allows you to work with a layer without adding it to the map. In this way, we'll load a layer and then add it to the map. As with the other videos on this course, you need to create a directory called QGIS underscore data in your root or user directory, which provides a short path name without spaces. This setup will help prevent any frustrating layers that result from path related issues on a given system. In this video and the others, we'll use a Landsat satellite image of the Mississippi Gulf Coast, which you can download from this GitHub link. Unzip the satimage.tiff and satimage.tfw files and place them in a directory named rasters within your QGIS underscore data directory. First, start QGIS. From the plugins menu, select Python console. Then, in the Python console, create the layer by specifying the source file and layer name. The layer has been created. Next, ensure that the layer is created as expected. So we validate it and it returns true. Finally, add the layer to the layer registry. You will see an output something like this on the map. The QGS raster layer object requires the location of the file and a name for the layer in QGIS. The underlying GDAR library determines the appropriate method of loading the layer. This approach contrasts with the QGS vector layer method, which requires you to specify a data provider. Raster layers also have a data provider, but unlike vector layers, all raster layers are managed through GDAL. One of the best features of QGIS is that it combines the best of breed open source geospatial tools in one package. GDAL can be used as a library, as we are using it here from Python or as a command line tool. Once we have created the QGS raster layer object, we do a quick check using the raster layer dot is valid method to see whether the file was loaded properly. This method will return true if the layer is valid. We won't use this method in every video, however, it is a best practice, especially when building dynamic applications that accept user input because most of the PyQGIS API is built around C libraries. Many methods do not throw exceptions if an operation fails. You must use specialized methods to verify the output. Finally, we add a layer to the map layer registry, which makes it available on the map and in the legend. The registry keeps track of all loaded layers by separating, loading, and visualizing the layers. QGIS allows you to work behind the scenes in order to perform unlimited intermediate processes on a layer before adding the final product to the map. In this video, we loaded a raster layer. Great. 